Happy New Year and welcome to Growth Stories. I'm Ben Landers, founder of Blue Corona, and I'm your host. If this is your first time tuning into the show, thank you for being here. If you've listened to the show before and you've enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, and give us a review. It really helps new people find the show. In today's episode, I'm speaking with Taylor Clark from Shanklin Heating and Air Conditioning in Dalton, Ohio. And we talk about the legacy of the business. It was started in the 1960s. It's a third generation family run company. So we talk about the legacy and, and sort of how you feel that as an employee, as a customer of the company, how it, how it ties into their marketing. And we talk about uh, the culture of the company. We talk about growth and some of the different strategies and tactics that Taylor's used to grow the business. We also touch on a topic that is especially, it's always important, but it's especially important right now with a tough economy, which is a new service offered by Blue Corona called Lead Capture Live. Blue Corona has data that shows that even large, sophisticated home service companies miss up to 25% of their marketing-driven phone calls. Some com companies obviously miss even more. Blue Corona's new service helps reduce that. We've reduced it from 25% in one instance down to 1%. So that is doing getting more from less. Whatever you invest in advertising and marketing, you're, you're investing to make the phone ring. You want to make sure that those calls are answered and that they're answered well, that they turn into appointments, jobs, revenue, and profit. And that's what Lead Capture Live is all about. We also have a webinar. We'll be doing a the Blue Corona team will be doing a webinar on February 1st, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes. So no matter what you're doing with advertising marketing, whether you're spending a little bit or spending a lot. Um, you definitely want to check out Lead Capture Live and check out the webinar because it's possible that you could be getting even more from what you already invest. So Taylor and I talk about that. We talk about their decision to invest in that service and sort of become an early adopter of it uh, and all sorts of other insights, what they mean when they say R&D and, and some of the different keys to their growth. So go grab a cup of coffee, notebook, pen and paper and enjoy. Taylor, welcome. Welcome to Growth Stories. Thank you for taking the time to do this. Thank you so much, Ben. I appreciate it. Happy to be here. Yeah, awesome. Well, can you give us, um, you know, for the audience's benefit, give us a little introduction who you are and tell us more about Shanklin. Of course. So my name is Taylor. I run our marketing and our in in, um, indoor air quality department here at Shanklin. We've been in business since 1960. We're a third generation company. Um, we're a customer service business that happens to do heating and air conditioning is the way we like to think about it. Um, customer service is our main focus. Um, and we, we serve a ton of people in our area. We serve our community um, any way we can. And that's really what sets us apart from anyone else in our area. Now, are you, are you, you're in sort of the Maslin, Ohio area? Yep. Yeah. We're located in Dalton, um, which is kind of a farming town, farming community. Um, we service a lot of oil furnaces and stuff, kind of like the old school um, systems and everything. But yeah, we've got, uh, we're really close to a lot of metropolitan areas, you could say, a lot of big cities. Um, so we we really have that at our advantage. And and are you from that area originally or how long, and how, how long have you been with the company and are you originally from the area? Yes. So I, um, I'm from a little town south of our office called Navarre, Ohio. Um, I've been with the company for almost seven years. Um, I was hired on as a CSR and a little bit of marketing that has since transitioned to all marketing and taken over that indoor air quality department um, and being on our leadership team of seven leaders, um, just trying to grow the company the best we can um, for our people and our customers. Um, but I've I knew of Shanklin growing up. I was good friends with the family. So when they presented me an offer, it was perfect timing. I just got my bachelor's in marketing. So I just jumped on the opportunity. I definitely didn't go to college thinking of working at a heating and air conditioning company, but here we are. And I, I could not imagine being anywhere else. I, uh, my wife is from Cuyahoga Falls. Oh uh, my gosh. Yeah. Not too far from you guys. And no. I, went to, I went to Ohio university. So are you kidding? Yeah, so I have a bunch of fraternity brothers from uh, from that area, and I, I got to say that uh, you know I'm from Maryland. So when I went to school, you know, in Maryland, I'm six feet tall. When I'm in my high school, I wasn't you know wasn't one of the <laughs> basketball players, but I was not short by any stretch yes. of imagination. And then I go to school in Ohio, and every guy that I know, I felt like was either you know towering over me, 
or you know built like a like a truck and they're all, all these guys from canton <laughs> yeah. and maslin and they all play Aww. football oh yeah. my gosh that's crazy yeah we always say like there's a bunch of corn-fed people around here that's for yeah. sure and all farm yeah, boys yeah. and stuff and that's crazy my sister went to ou she went to med school down there and my husband's from that area and stuff too that's yeah. amazing yeah Cuyahoga falls that's crazy yeah yeah that's I, I feel like everyone has a connection to uh you know to ohio so uh and, and mike our president you know lives in delaware columbus ohio and dinesh our our um chief technology officer is also in in uh columbus um oh my gosh i can't remember the town so yeah we have a ton of you know ohio uh, that's awesome. i never knew that that's incredible yeah. yeah we go to about hudson cuyahoga falls yeah. is a little outside of our service area but that's amazing yeah well i i think when i was looking at um you know when i was looking at the company um kind of looking at the facebook page and, and again it's uh you know it just all comes you know comes flooding back i think there's a couple pictures of um you know you guys doing community you know, oriented stuff and trainings for the techs and, you know, and it's like behind is a big farm field and, you know, it's yes. like doing the trainings, all the equipment's out in the, you know, in the lot. And I was like, you can just, I can, as someone who's spent a lot of time there, I can just kind of envision you know, that whole area. So that's great. So how, so how did you, um, how did you, you mentioned you got into sort of the home service industry and into the company, you knew the family kind of were familiar with the brand, you know, sort of growing up. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So I had um, some people I went to school with. So Shanklin in a whole is a huge um, proponent of the trade schools, um, specifically our career center for our mm -hmm. county. It's called RG Drag Career Center. So at least, you know, every quarter, if not more, um, Derek Shanklin, one of the owners or myself, Matt, our install manager will go to that trade school, visit the heating and cooling program. We're fortunate enough to have an HVAC program program at that school um mm -hmm. we just try to get in front of the kids as much as we can and stuff so um when I went to high school uh way back when a lot of my friends went into that HVAC trade and was just introduced to the company that way um mm -hmm. again so when they reached out or said hey can we help you um you know I was blessed to, for them to see some type of you know skill in me mm -hmm. or or something of that nature so uh, when they asked me I was like oh my gosh that's incredible for sure I also like that you came to the role through the CSR role, you know, when we started Blue Corona, in the very beginning, we were tracking advertising. So we weren't even in the marketing space, we were tracking, you know, marketing. And one of the elements of that, as you know, is, uh, you know, listening to the calls that, that come in and, you know, sort of evaluating, is this a solicitation, like another ad rep calling from your yellow page ad or your you know, radio spot or whatever, trying to sell you more advertising, or is it an actual um, customer? And, you know, we, in the early days, you know, myself and um, a handful of other people were the ones listening to the calls, you know, on behalf of the customers. And so, and I remember early employees were like, you know, you want us to sit here and listen to these phone calls and like, you know, it's a home, it's a plumbing company or it's an HVAC company. Like, of course the customer service is going to be, you know, hit or, hit or miss. And it's like, no, that's not, that's not the concept. I mean, you know, again, these guys are paying lots of money for advertising and we want to ensure that the calls are being handled well and that, you know, and that they're good calls, good quality um, calls. And so, yeah, I've spent a lot of time um, sort of listening to the customer service, customer interaction. And I think it gives you probably a huge advantage, you know, in terms of like, you know, what the pains, you know, the pain that the customer is experiencing you know, because you've listened to and, and handled some of those calls, you know, inbound. Yeah. So that's great. Definitely. And um, I think it's a, it makes me such a better leader for our technicians as well. You know, the person says one thing on the phone, the technician is walking into a completely different situation. They're walking into a firestorm. They're walking into mm -hmm. a customer that's without heat, without cooling or whatever, you know, they're walking into a stressful situation. So to be able to translate the phone call, the customer's need to a technician who's probably really stressed out or having a hard day or, you know, needs parts or whatever, um, seeing that, you know, growth in our company, I think has completely benefited me. I know it's benefited me. Um, and, and, you know, we've utilized other services to really help us hone in on, on how we handle customer phone calls. You know, we have scripts and we have processes that we've really honed down on. So, I mean, it sets everybody up for success. You know, it sets the CSRs, our ladies in the office, our, our salespeople, our technicians. It's just, 
it benefits everybody for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, talk about a little bit about, you, you mentioned the company started in 1960, 1962, whatever it was a long time ago, mm -hmm. sort of that, that legacy and then the growth of the company. And I guess when I say like, talk a little bit more about the legacy, I watched a video on the website with, um, is a Kip with Kip and Derek, you know, and they were talking about the great, you know, the grandfather yes. starting the company and, and, uh, you know, and they were talking about like uh, them trying to run the business in a way that, you know, sort of like, uh, you know, like um, keeps central the values that, you know, the grandfather, father, you know, sort of had. Does that all, is that sort of an undercurrent, you know, as an employee of the business? Is it something that gets talked about all the time? Do you involve it kind of, do you think about it when you're doing marketing campaigns or is again, is it just sort of an undercurrent that's always, always there? That's a great question. So um, their grandpa started it back in 1960. And from the stories I've hold, heard, he was a pretty gruff, rough country guy, you know, that maybe didn't put customer service at the forefront, but he'd get it done. And mm -hmm. then when Kip and Derek's dad started working with him and took it over, he was kind of the complete opposite and, you know, would do anything for anybody. Don't worry about paying me right now, which mm -hmm. is incredible and such, you know, a great person, but it's not really a sustainable business model. Um, you know, so when Kip and Derek took over in 2006, um, their dad actually unexpectedly passed away. Derek took over the company with his brother, Kip stepping in shortly after. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and going from survival mode, we have to, you know, are we going to sell it? Do we keep it? Do we just put our nose to the ground and grind as much as possible out and, um, you know, kind of, sustain this legacy you know of their dad's company at, a, at an unexpected time mm. and I think just about every employee here knows that story and knows you know that Kip and Derek did everything in their power to continue Shanklin to make it the company that it is today I mean our core values are hunger integrity value humility mm. and we make every decision in the company not just the leadership team but every employee mm. here um, you know, with those core values in mind. And it's just, it's part of our, our culture. It's who we are as a company. It's what we do. Um, and, and, you know, bridging that gap, you mentioned the phone calls earlier. Um, like back to the stigma that I think maybe the last 15 or 20 years up until this point of having a tradesperson come in your home, it was kind of like, you know, as a sketchy vehicle, they maybe were just not in a uniform. And it was, you know, you wouldn't leave your grandma home alone with a tradesperson. You know what I mean? So um, where we're at now, I mean, the trades is something to be proud of our technicians and, you know, really any technician out there. I'm glad that the thought is changing that like technicians are skilled people, men and women fixing people's homes, dealing with discomfort, you know, really providing solutions to people. And, and I mean, that's just, I I'm happy that that transition is happening because we have the absolute best people here on our team that we would all send to any of our grandma's house. Mm. Um, I don't know if you're allowed to talk about this. Um, I mean, I guess the, I can see it in pictures on social media. So maybe it's uh, something that's it's out there, which is like one of the things that, and I'm going a little bit out of order here, but one of the things that I really liked about your, your company's Facebook page is that it's not overly kind of overtly promotional. It's sort of like opening up the doors of the company and sort of showing the people and the culture of the company to the outside world. So that if I'm, you know, if I live in the area and I need, um, you know, a contract to come to the house, it's like, you know, in, in one sense, the the general consumer, you know, is not an expert in all this stuff. So it's like, they, they want to know that they can pick a company that they trust and you get that immediately from the Facebook page. But one of the things that I noticed was besides all the events um, where again, Kip and Derek are there, like, you know, speaking or presenting some an award or their Santa, you know, at a looks like a holiday party, yes. but what's the um sort of the bucket list wall. It looks like you have employee character caricatures or pictures with like, I can't see what it is, like maybe magnets that hold like things that I'm guessing are like things that people would like that are on their bucket list. What is that? Yes. Oh, thank you for bringing that up. And thanks for looking at our Facebook page. I mean, we 100% believe that number one, we should show our, our customers, potential customers, 
who our people are on all of our advertisements, all over our website um, that you guys manage. It's completely our people. We don't believe in stock images, which works for some people if that's their thing. Cool. But like, we really want to show our people that are, I mean, so many times I've heard technicians um, go to a customer's house that received a postcard or was served an ad on online or something. And they're like, oh my gosh, it's you. Like you're actually, and they're like, yeah, it's us. Like, of course we use us. So, um, and then uh, you, the bucket list wall. Okay. So it had the, um, you know, it has the character of the person, which is cool to be like, oh my gosh, I have a cartoon of me. So we like that for our people, but it had their favorite drink, their favorite candy bar, favorite snack, um, mm -hmm. one or two things that was on their bucket list. Um, and it was just, you know, to show that we really do care about our people. If we take care of our employees, they will in turn take care of the customers that we don't have face-to-face -face interactions with. So, um, again, back to culture, that's our biggest, biggest thing we have, um, you know, not only customer appreciation days we have, it's called a Shimpact Day, Shanklin Impact. How can we impact our employees? Mm. Um, you know, we give them free boots or free tools. Um, we cook out. Uh, we we just do whatever we can think like you said the christmas party the company christmas party we That's go like there's all like a out summer, like summer fest or a, a yes. summer fest and yep we want well, the it, to be taken care of we send out birthday cards um with a restaurant gift card to every employee on their yeah. birthday we send a gift card on their um on their work anniversary we send all the wives and mothers of our employees mm -hmm. we we buy like hanging basket flowers and we deliver them to everybody's house because you know, if we can take care of the people at home, maybe they'll be more likely to say, oh, honey, you're a hard day. It was okay. Like Shanklin's a good employee. Like Our it's okay. <laughs> no, so. We learned a long time ago, like we would, we, when we were more of a startup, you know, people are working all hours of the day and, you know, and so you buy them dinner or you, you give them a gift or whatever. And then someone else was like, no, 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 you got to send something to like the Aww. wife, husband, girlfriend, boyfriend, because that's the person that's going like, you need to find a different job. You know, it's nine o'clock oh, you're, right. you're just getting home. Completely. Um, you're totally right. Yeah, that's awesome. So did that stuff, was that stuff that sort of Kip and Derek brought into the business and sort of a, as an evolution or is that stuff that was, that was always there? And I, I, I guess I asked that more that I, I think it's still pretty rare you know, for a home service company to be doing what you're doing. I mean, the best companies, you see that kind of mentality. But I mean, maybe you don't get as much outside of the walls of your company as I do. I mean, that's what you're doing. It puts you in a, you know, in a really small, Aww. you know, bucket of folks. So I think it's, it's, um, it's well worth it. But is that something that, they, as far as you know, that sort of like, that they evolved with the business or is it always that way? Well, thank you for saying that. That's so yeah. I can't speak to when their dad worked here. I was not here when he was there, but I can speak to Kip and Derek's character and their dad must have had some sort of influence on them for them to act the way they are. Mm. I'm sorry. I just got a call. Are you still there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, I mean, their mom stops in, you know, maybe once a week, she lives right down the road and she is just a ball of excitement so um you know and kip and derek are polar opposite personalities derek's this big idea and kip's the number like let's make a real realistic rational decision um so they perfectly complement each other they're willing to try anything they're not set in old ways and i just think that's a product of their upbringing i guess to answer your question do you do you guys use any sort of um i don't know we used eos um, it's like an operating system, a way to kind of run the business. Do you guys use anything like that? Or is it just sort of homegrown? Like what, when you do your meetings, meeting cadence, planning, all that stuff? Yep. Homegrown. I would say we do have an operations coordinator, Tiffany. She creates processes and helps, you know, each, each department leader develop a process and implement and follow through and everything. But as far as any, you know, purchased or anything like that program, um, no, it's, it's just the seven of us on the leadership team, getting our heads together, um, finding out what our team members need or want or think, hearing out the good ideas, hearing out the bad ideas, trying good things, trying bad things and learning from them. But Again, just back to Kip and Derek, like being completely with, I mean, I, I'm confident I could go to Derek and say, Hey, we should buy an airplane and put Shanklin on it. He'd be like, yeah, let's try it. Like, you know, so yeah. that, well, the, that that's a good transition into sort of the marketing strategy and, and growth. I know, you know, there's um for some companies, it doesn't necessarily sound like you 
you have this challenge, but, you know, for some companies, the challenge is, you know, the marketing person, A, kind of sees the all encompassing, you know, like we need to make sure that that customer service team is aligned to the marketing, that the technicians are aligned, like, you know, they kind of see it all as this cohesive piece. Um, so that's one challenge. And, you know, if they're not given enough access or control or input into like how calls are handled or follow up communication, you know, that can be harder. The other thing that I think, you know, can be challenging is again, where you have like an owner or owners who are not necessarily marketing people, kind of more numbers oriented where, you know, it's like, Hey, if you can show me the ROI, I'll do it. But the problem with a lot of marketing things, and again, we're in the business of the measurable stuff, but you still have to be testing. And initially you don't know when you measure it, if it's going to be a great concept or a total bust. And if if every bust is like, you're fired, that's not a great (laughs) concept. No, um, so I, I guess yeah. talk a little bit about that and I guess how you guys think about marketing. Do they sort of let you, you know, sort of uh, try different things and give you a lot of rope in that regard? Is it is it you bouncing ideas off the leadership team or are you more of a kind of a one woman wrecking crew? Yeah, a uh, one woman wrecking crew, but um, that freedom, I've made my fair share of mistakes for sure. I've had some terrible marketing ideas, but I've learned from them too. Um, and it's, it's a pretty well-oiled machine at this point. Um, you know, we have you guys managing our website, our SEO, all of the Google world and everything, which takes a huge load off of me. I don't know any of that. I, I don't need to know any of that, but, um, so you guys doing that, you know, we have direct mail. We really like just because, it seems to stand out in such a digital world of today. Mm -hmm. And our customer, again, a rural country folk, Mm -hmm. they look at their mail and they appreciate a postcard. So Mm -hmm. that works for us. Um, You know, community involvement is huge for us. Mm -hmm. We found, you know, we, um, we donate to a local nonprofit every month. Um, That matters to us supporting our community as they support us. Um, But the, uh, have, has there, I mean, in seven years is a pretty decent, a decent stretch. How have the sort of the marketing channels evolved? Mm-hmm. How have you seen them evolve since in the time that you've mm-hmm. sort of been there? I mean, has there been a shift, um, you know, from, you know, sort of like if you were weighting the different channels in terms of how much you use them, are there new things that you're doing today that weren't on the radar when you first, you know, took so on the role? Things, yeah, some things that we've seen that are pretty dead, I would say is obviously the phone book, Mm. the newspaper. I hate to say it. Like my mom still gets the paper. I get it. That's for some people, but it's just, but like you said earlier about tracking marketing, I mean, you can serve a customer 400 ads and they see your truck drive down the road. They see our truck drive down the road when they need, when they're in need Mm -hmm. and they call us and they say, Oh, I saw your truck. And it's just like, Mm -hmm. well, shoot, how about all that other marketing that we've served you, Mm -hmm. you know, all that other branding and brand awareness and stuff. But, um, you know, we definitely invest the most in our digital, um, Mm -hmm. just because that's, it is what it is. We've got, you know, 20 somethings buying houses now. What do they do? They, they research the heck out of stuff a lot more than maybe people did in the old days. They're not afraid to learn or be experts. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, competing with our competition in the area in the digital market, um, and just with how, how much Google changes for the best mm. user experience. Um, you know, we utilize streaming services, mm. um, like over the top marketing mm-hmm. with you guys. Um, is that really- something, when did you start using that? Do you remember? I mean, is that sort of a new Last year? thing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I think we maybe did four months, turned it off for a couple months when we're super busy and we just cut our yeah. marketing way down and yeah. then started it back up again. And, um, Yeah, I just think it's incredible the way, number one, that you guys can track stuff. And number two, I like, I mean, we're on cable TV, um, but the fact that it's served to a customer, whether their TV's on or off is kind of, okay, let's not do that. Where can we better serve, serve people or our information? How many, um, how many trucks do you guys have like ballpark? How big is the company? So I think we have maybe 29 or 30 vehicles on the road. We have uh, 13 or 14 installers. That can do anywhere from four, five to twelve installs a day. Wow. Um, and we have, I think, twelve service technicians that are running anywhere from, you know, six to seven service calls a day times the number of technicians. So, yeah, we can handle a pretty good volume. I think. Um, so just over Christmas, we had like negative thirty degree temperatures, winds, and stuff. I think 
over Christmas weekend, we took 487 calls or something came in and it's just, you Mm. know, you do what you can in that time. But I was going to say there's a, uh, I, I got into the home services space sort of, you know, accidentally, um, going to work for a home service company before starting, uh, Blue what do you mean accidentally? What does that mean? Well, I, uh, I, you know, I started my career in tech. So I, I started with hotjobs.com, you know, as one of the, I wasn't one of the, I was an early employee, but I wasn't one of the earliest employees. And so I was in the sort of the dot-com, you know, era, and then the dot-com explosion happened. And then I went to WorldCom, which some people your age have, haven't even heard of, but WorldCom was like this oh, huge no. telecommunications company that was acquiring, like WorldCom was just bought, WorldCom bought MCI, which was like, be like a tiny little company, like Landers Telecommunication buying at and It's just, it was like unheard of. And wow. um, WorldCom grew really big. And then there was a big financial you know, scandal, of course, had nothing, you know, I, I was on the peripheral of it, 120,000 employees. And one day I'm like waiting for the elevator in downtown Chicago. And there's a digital TV saying with like our CEO and our CFO being let off with like by FBI agents. And I was like, oh gosh, like what, what just happened? Oh, so so all that, all that happened. And then I, I got in advertising, which moved me from Chicago back to Maryland where I'm from. And then I just happened to meet a guy who had a, a bottled water delivery company and half the customers were residential. So kind of home, half were commercial. And I had no intention of, you know, going to work for a local, you know, company like that. Um, but, you know, he was a really um, interesting guy. Um, he had gone to he had gone to Harvard Business School, but was running this, you know, five million dollar bottled water delivery company. And I remember thinking like, what? Like, you know, people go to Harvard Business School, become like consultants and hedge fund managers and, you know, like big finance. Yeah. You have a five million for bottled water. Like, yeah, yeah. It was, I mean, it was no, again, to me back then, to me, that was like, I was like, and so the job was to go work directly for him. And so my, my thought was, Hey, I've always been an employee of these, you know, big companies where I'm just one of, you know, a hundred thousand. Yeah, this is like it, it was like one of those movies where you're the limo driver for the big cheese, you know, and it's like I was in every meeting and wow, you know, talking to him after all those meetings. And so everything I've learned about business didn't come from Ohio. I, I love I love OU. My wife came from OU. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't learn all the business stuff there. I learned it from him. Wow. Uh, watching him. But but the thing that's, that sticks out to me and you just your comment about the people working you know, over the Christmas holiday is like. People in the home services industry have a work ethic that is, you know, uncommon, um, you know, and and so that to me, that was always inspiring is watching people who are coming in, you know, at four or five in the morning, loading up trucks, getting out before the traffic, work all day. I, I could never believe the guys that would work all day and then they would come home and I'd go, where are you going? And they're like, I'm going to go to the gym. And I'm like, you just unloaded 300 50 pound bottles of water. And now oh. you're going to go lift weights like who does <laughs> wow. that? Meanwhile, I'm like pecking away on a keyboard going like, why am I getting fat? You know? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) The wrong job. Oh, so that's cool. What, um, um, what, I guess, I don't know if you have perspective into this, um, you know, but what would you say, or what do you think are some of the mistakes that other, you know, home services companies or, or smaller companies might be making with respect to their, you know, their marketing or their website? That's a good, a good question. I guess what I appreciate most, which I don't think happens very often, or some of the things I appreciate most is how open our owners are. It seems like so many companies are like, you know, they hide their books, they hide the numbers, they hide the problems. But I mean, we surround ourselves with different minds, different ideas. You know, we are in a ton of different networking groups with other service contractors, Um, you know, like, R&D, we call it rob and duplicate. If we see something that's going right, we're going to start doing it. And it's, we're not ashamed of it. You know, it's just utilizing people that are smarter than us, that know more than us. Um, You know, our Kip and Derek share their numbers with the leadership team, which we, and we're, we're constantly building leaders in our company. And I don't know if that really happens Mm -hmm. Um, back to our culture, back to uh, employee appreciation, customer appreciation, community involvement. Um, and then, um, you know, there's industry standards as far as marketing spends, but I think 
maybe being scared to fluctuate from that or mm-hmm. adjust when necessary, you know, nothing set in stone, spend some money somewhere else. I, I think that's another big thing is people like don't believe in spending money to make money, or at least they didn't used to, maybe they're, um, you know, more inclined to do it now, but uh, you definitely have to get out there. Don't be scared. Go make a Facebook live video. Who, who cares if you mess up, you know? And um, I, I remember, uh, I remember Bob, Bob is my original business partner and the, the bottle water guy. And, you know, and I went to work for him sort of to get a practical MBA, you know, it's like, I'm not going to get into yes. Harvard or afford to go there. But um, I remember I was very risk averse, you know, I didn't want to spend money on anything. When we started Blue Corona, you know, it was like trying to test different things. And I remember I told Bob, I'd spent, you know, a thousand dollars on something. And, you know, he said, like, that's not a test, you know, like a test is like, spend 10 grand on it in a month and you'll know definitively whether it works or it doesn't, but spending $800 or whatever you're spending metered over six months, it's going to create this great picture. And, and I was saying to him, like, we don't have all that much money. Like we're going to go out of business, you know? And he's like, Hey, every, think of everything that you do that fails. Like think of it like a little case study that goes in a binder, you know? And at the end you have an MBA, like you have all the things that you've learned. And, um, you know, if you don't do something, you're going to have business anyway. For um, sure. It's just going to take, you know, take a little bit longer. Um, I think you guys sent us cookies with your logo on it years ago. And I don't know if we were a customer or not. I think it was a thank you box, but like, who's doing that? That's well, you incredible. know, what's funny too, that, you know, what's funny about that is um, that company. Uh, uh, they're in Ohio, uh, right? Yeah. They're in Columbus. Yes. Yeah. And and we found that this is crazy, but our biggest client, they're probably still the biggest client. They started as this family owned company, grew, went public. Now they're a big publicly traded company in Columbus. Um, and we stayed that when they went public, we had to redo their whole website with all these disclosures and all this stuff just before they went public. And the idea is like, as soon as we go public and do this press release, the site is going to get thousands of people and we want to make sure sure it doesn't crash and so anyway our web team was there like i think for a whole weekend like going through every page you know twice and all that stuff and they sent pizzas to the office they sent those cookies with our logo on it though not their logo and i was like it was just it was a really great gesture of like how do you treat a partner or a vendor yes you know it's like at the end of that every employee that we had working you know for that client was like would do anything Oh, you know, for them. So yeah, that's where we found those. And then we started going like, man, that was, they're good. And the fact that you can just call up the company and say, send a box here, send a box here, sent with a note was awesome. That's um, incredible. I mean, it stuck out to me and that was years ago, mm-hmm. years yeah, ago. That's, great. that's awesome. Well, are there any, um, I guess uh, I, I, there's one thing that um, I was talking to the team and they mentioned that you are, you know, so we have a new service lead capture live. And, yeah. uh, and as I understand, you guys are an early, well, early ish adopter of that. How did you, f- how did you find that service? And maybe in your words, what is it, what's the benefit to the, for sure. You know, someone like yourself. So back to that 487 calls that came in over a weekend. Um, you know, we've been experienced experiencing high call, call volumes for months now. And, you know, the CSR, position is a little more difficult for us to hire because there is a learning curve you know, that's hard, a little harder, takes a little longer to overcome with our dispatching software, you know, even what a furnace is versus an air conditioner. It's just not something a lot of people have common, you know, knowledge on. Um, and I believe, um, you know, we, we tried call centers before we are definitely against that. It's just, again, that negative connotation associated with call centers and such. Um, but, uh, you know, Jamie, our account manager brought it up to us. Hey, just, you know, um, because in our monthly report with you guys that you do with the revenue attribution, you know, this is how many calls we brought in. This is the budget you spent and everything. Um, we consistently had 25% missed calls on our blue Corona tracked lines. Mm. And I was always, you know, I know for a fact that our CSRs call back every customer that they don't answer initially. I just, I know it happens. However, Google doesn't know it happens. Google Mm. doesn't care that it happened. They care that we missed the call. Mm. And you know that I'm not, I'm not spending money to miss calls, right? You know, these people deserve to be answered on the first call. We understand that. Um, And we just couldn't get over that hiring hump of a CSR. So 
Jamie mentioned, hey, we have this thing called Lead Capture Live. I think you guys also offered it to us as a trial run before. Um, mm -hmm. uh, like, hey, we're trying this new service. Would you guys test it for us and something like mm -hmm. that? So um, when we decided, you know, hey, we need some, honestly, we need some temporary help. We're not sure what we're doing yet. We don't have a game plan yet, but we do know that these customers deserve to be answered. We do know we're spending money for them to call and then we're not getting to it. Um, and rightfully so. We don't want our CSRs to spend less time on the phone with the customers that they are talking to. You know, if they're on a 10, 15, 20 minute phone call with somebody, you need to be on a 10, 15 minute phone call with somebody. Don't cut your conversation short. Um, so when she brought that up, um, you know, you guys really went through the script. She listened, you guys were already listening to our calls, how you attribute them. So you know how we talk to our customers, you know how we expect our customers to be talked to. Um, so that was just, I mean, it was a it was a super easy implementation process on your guys's part. You know, you tested it, you made sample calls and stuff to make sure that's how um, that's how we wanted our calls to be answered, our customers to be talked to. The reporting's incredible. Um, you know, hey, we answered this many calls. Here's the messages. The the um, ladies in the office love it. Mm -hmm. They love knowing. You know, okay, I have a message. I have the information. They think they're talking to Shanklin, which is great. Mm -hmm. And then our girls, you know, can go from there. Um, but yeah, it really has been a great temporary, whatever that word means, temporary, you know, solution for us, um, making the most out of our money that we're spending, helping our customers as best we can. And so that's, I mean, one of the many super beneficial services that you guys are providing for us. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's one of those things we're trying, ultimately we want to help our, you know, help our clients grow. Um, you know, increase the profitability of their company, you know, of course, provide the best service that they can to their, you know, end customers. And so we're try always trying to look at, you know, look at things through that lens. And if there's something that we see that's an opportunity, it's like, test it and, you know, get it right and then, and then implement it. For sure. um, um, oh, there was one. That, what, what are some of the, um, are there any trends or things that you're sort of watching either industry trends or marketing trends, things that are sort of on your radar, not necessarily that you're doing anything about, but just things that you're sort of watching. Um, just like the new equipment coming out, the different government regulations on SEER ratings for stuff, you know, they're coming out with this SEER 2, introducing a new refrigerant in the next mm -hmm. few years, um, how the equipment technology is changing, you know, there's apps on your phone, we can Bluetooth into furnaces and fix them, diagnose them, figure out what's going on. Um, we train with our techs at least once a week on whatever trend is happening. So as far as industry, um, I would say the change in equipment, which happens all the time. So that's nothing new. Um, the changing attitude towards service and trade, kind of like what we talked about earlier. I think that's something that we're trying to capitalize on. Um, it's not the college route anymore. It's trade. Mm -hmm. How can we get to the students as early as possible to come to our company or to go into the industry really where, you know, for, for the ones coming to us, they don't have a negative attitude. They don't, you know, they don't have a previous experience to bias them at all. Mm -hmm. um, and in two to five years, we have an outstanding technician that, that eats, sleeps, breathes Shanklin and customer service. Um, so that's always on our radar. And then as far as marketing trends, I just, I'm still a firm believer in the more we give back, the more we receive. So just continuing that trend. Mm -hmm. um, I, I direct mail stands out in our area um, mm -hmm. and then just keeping up on the digital changes and everything. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's funny. You mentioned direct mail and the trucks and, you know, I always used to joke around that you know, you're trying to be everywhere, you know, your customer's and prospects could be so that mm -hmm. yeah when there's the need you know it's like you're you're top of mind and to for just sure. to do that cost effectively you know you mentioned like for example the newspaper and the phone books and all that stuff the the funniest thing the thing i could never really understand i sort of get it from a business perspective but you know it's like the yellow pages when it was dying our our rep would come back in and the price would be almost the same and it was like yeah. this is how the leads are going the cost of your book is staying the same. So the cost per lead is going through the roof. Like, yeah, I don't understand. I mean, I would run if it was a lot, a lot 
cheaper. You know, I put in the TV, uh, the um, the newspaper spot for someone right. like your mom, if they would adjust the yes the, the ad rates to and be. And the people reasonable. that are calling out of the phone book are using a phone book that's twenty years old. <laughs> like, they don't care that the, they throw the new yeah, one out. Yeah. It's you know. Oh gosh. In Maryland in you know and I'm sure this is the same in Cleveland and you know sort of the real like metro areas like there's a website that you go to to basically say stop you know stop delivering this thing to my house cuz it just stays on the uh, curb, oh you know, for forever but you know back in the day that was the you know that was the thing and I'm sure oh, there'll be a sure. new thing you know that hopefully I'm I'm sure all these tech companies are it's like you know you'll be asking Alexa to you know call the furnace guy and <laughs> That'll then translate into. Oh my gosh! Oh, yeah. That all that stuff is you know is being tested. It's just it's like everything that's in test mode. It's you know it's rough. Oh, we rely on you guys to tell us that that's coming. So you well, that, guys, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll try down. to stay on top of all the tech, tech, <laughs> yeah. trends so that we can give you sort of the the rundown of the separating the wheat from the the chaff, the stuff you yeah. don't need to waste your time on. Oh. <laughs> Well, Taylor, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Thank you for being customer. Oh. I got a chat from Jamie. She said, you guys have been with us since 2016. Wow. Oh, thank you. That's a long relationship and we really value it, value all your feedback and all the compliments. And uh, of course, if there's anything you know ever that we can do to, to make things even better, you have for a direct sure. line to all of us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And um, I, I really appreciate you wanting to talk to me and hear what I have to say. I hope it was valuable and stuff. Yeah, that was great.